Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Science headlines around the world tell us almost daily about astronomers' observations of black holes in deep space. These headlines imply that the existence of black holes is no longer in doubt. But not every story suggests that all is well with black hole theory. Recently, astronomers using the VLA telescope made a surprising discovery. They observed two bright radio spots in the globular cluster M22, which they interpret as proof of two small black holes. However, standard theory dictates that only one black hole, at most, should be present in the cluster. The National Radio Astronomy Observatory reports of these findings. Simulations have indicated that these black holes would fall toward the center of the cluster, then begin a violent gravitational dance with each other, in which all of them, or perhaps all but a single one, would be thrown completely out of the cluster. But as is often the case in media discussions of black holes, are we really seeing the complete story? It's felt that really all but one of these black holes are expected to be ejected from the cluster through various kinds of dynamical interaction, even though, as they point out, perhaps hundreds of these may be formed originally when the globular cluster is condensed. They also note um, a relative lack of black hole binaries in different kinds of globular clusters that have been observed. But let's just back up a little bit and be clear about what's really being observed here. The way the paper is reported, and even the way the original journal article is written, the things being observed are labeled unequivocally black holes. But what is really being observed is a couple bright radio spots in, in the sky. In this case, it was two relatively bright radio spots. That's it. What is inferred from that is that each of those radio spots is a binary with a black hole and another star with the other star feeding the black hole hot gas, which is accelerated and superheated to the extent that it emits, in this case, radio, but more often than not, they're talking about x-rays, that they'll see a bright x-ray spot with an x-ray observatory, and what's inferred is that's a black hole that's emitting x-rays, but we don't see a black hole. We don't see an accretion disk, which is apparently emitting the various kinds of radiation. We don't even see a binary. What we see is an energy source, a dot, basically, against a darker background of the same energy. So in this case, the authors see these two radio sources in M22 and propose that there are two black holes of what's called stellar mass, about 10 to 20 times that of our sun. After that initial proposal in the paper, it's then taken as fact that we're looking at black holes. Also missing from media coverage is an historical perspective on the evolution of black hole theory in response to surprising discoveries in space. What's interesting is the way that this accretion disk model has, has evolved. On one hand, there was mathematical abstraction of a black hole, which attracted mathematical physicists. Um, because of the elegant way in which the field equations, in which Einstein's field equations could be solved. Um, and there was an increasing complexity of the boundary conditions that were allowed around the field equations to create different hypothetical versions of black holes. And you can read this in the history of black holes and how those boundary conditions were enhanced. And then at the same time, observations of highly energetic events that were being increasingly seen because the kinds of devices, the, the kinds of observatories and the number of observatories and the frequencies that we were allowed to see at and radio and UV and X-rays and gamma rays, it's difficult to, to assign an engine to drive them. And in a cosmological framework that really uses only gravity to explain how things work, being able to take the mathematical abstraction that had been then sort of evolving in parallel, it, that was the tool in the toolbox that came to hand. It was very clever, the construct that was created around these binaries that cannot be seen, the accretion disks that cannot be observed. But what I find worrying is the way that it's adopted now is the only explanation. It worries me that any time an X-ray source is observed, it's a black hole so that the media and the general public 
are left with the feeling that we are directly observing black holes all the time. That's not the case. We're observing very high energy, very distant high energy events, like X-ray flickers in our observatories. They're not black holes. There are unexpected and variable radiation sources, um, sudden sudden flashes of gamma rays or sudden flashes of x-rays that coincide with optical emissions at the same time. And it usually results in very convoluted explanations involving a binary accretion disk, gases that are being dammed up somehow and then allowed to flow and accelerate to create these flashes of energy. Whereas these kinds of intense and periodic or variable energetic events can be observed with plasma behavior quite commonly in the lab or at different scales. For decades, scientists working with electrified plasmas in the laboratory have succeeded in reproducing both high energy emissions and extraordinary structure that we now observe in space across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. For a long time, the idea of electrical currents in space was sort of poo-pooed, but now we know it's quite common. The space between the Earth and the Sun is known to have huge plasma filaments of electrical current, creating large ropes of magnetic fields. So if we're forced to accept electrical currents in our solar system, is it not possible to accept large-scale electric currents, and even more so, accept large-scale high-energy electrical events? Gravity is very, very weak. To achieve these energy densities with a gravity-driven engine, you need supermassive and super dense objects to make it all work. You can create very high energy plasma events in the lab. Exploding double layers, arcing, etc., output gamma rays, x-rays, and so on. These are high energy electrical events you can create in the lab and scale. You cannot create the black hole and an accretion disk in the lab, but you can sure create these electrical plasma phenomenon and they scale up very nicely to these kinds of galactic and, and stellar sizes. So uh, my feeling is why go so exotic in sci-fi with black holes and event horizons and so forth? Occam's razor dictates we accept a simpler, fossilifiable explanation. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.